Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm fine, Viva. Uh, Workout is expecting uh, US FDA approval for Zenich in 2026. So, one, uh, I want to confirm if the timeline has changed in any way. You know, do you think that given the phase three results were quite promising, it has show proved effectiveness uh, when made available through the expanded access program? So, is there a likelihood that this uh, timeline could shift? to a bit earlier and you could get accelerated yeah, approval? Yeah, let me just uh, tell you that the phase three results are very good in the sense that it is uh, a delta difference about 30 percent instead of plus 15 percent. Mm -hmm. So as per the current rules, it is classified as a superior product. Right. And I don't think the timeline will change very much. Because we will be filing middle of this year and we expect uh, sometime in 26 approval, middle of 26 approval by USFD. Okay, okay. So would this be through the normal route or through the accelerated uh, program? It will be accelerated program. That's why I cannot uh, comment, uh, you know, how much DA would take. They are supposed to take only six months, but we are factoring about... <laughs> three four months more it takes. That is our feedback coming. Okay. And new administration coming and what they are doing, we have no idea what will happen. Yeah. So yeah, if you consider a little longer, it still comes in within twenty six, uh, FI twenty six. But how soon after the approval from uh, the Indian regulator, Indian uh, CDSEO, and EMA? Are the product registrations likely to begin within uh, India, India and Europe? India definitely it will be uh, happening hopefully early next year. Mm -hmm. uh, approval coming in within three months we will be introducing in India. Uh, so okay. we, uh, we expect India approval to be the first because we have got the results of phase three clinical trial. We have also taken meropenem resistant phase two trial. And the uh, regulator has given us this commission because there is an urgency felt. Because yes. of that news. So from all these perspectives, we expect the approval to come during the year, later part of the year. Late FI26 or early FI27? Yes. Right. And what about Europe, EMA? Uh, EMA would be after the US because we would be filing later to EMA. Okay. And so, and EMA takes a little longer in the approval time. Yeah, yeah. In EMA, Europe, we need to also to guess price uh, with various countries. Right. Uh, well, I think that process takes a little longer time. So, right. there will be a gap when we launch in the US and uh, make it available for uh, Europe. Third question, would the drug be available to patients via hospitals and clinics, considering, you know, it, it is uh, an injectable and it is going to be available for settings which are also more um, kind of conducive to treating cases which are in hospitals? So, it will be uh, entirely hospital and generally we expect most of our business to come only to wherever intensive ICCU clinics are there. And mm. they treat a critical patient because uh, this is a drug not routinely to be utilized, nor it will be utilized routinely. Mm. Uh, because of a uh, major price differential between generic and a new drug. So, mm. from that point of view, we don't expect in India or anywhere in the world that it will be utilized initially. But it right. will be fully utilized uh, where there is uh, uh, the the drugs are not equal. Okay, so is there any way in which you will be able to work on the reimbursement of the costs? Uh, we expect that uh, healthcare authorities, India, US, worldwide, uh, would be reimbursing the costs. As far as the US is concerned, it will be definitely reimbursement of costs would be there because they already reimburse all hospitalized patient costs for the indication disease they have. So it will come within that framework anyway. S same would be European authority where the government is a buyer. Major. Yes. If yes. Uh, India is concerned, a fairly large number of patients in uh, a tertiary care hospital 
are mm. covered by insurance claim, especially mm -hmm. in uh, bigger cities, you know. So okay. in all those cases, it will be reimbursed. Anyway, if the patient goes as a private patient in India, uh, that will be part of their cost. Yeah, but yeah. Actually, actually, our, uh, we are doing a pharmacoeconomic study on this product, and our belief is to a patient, it will be more cost-effective than any alternate treatment. Because what you do is you see a safe number of days in critical care in a hospital. And yeah, that yeah. it's a very, very significant compared to the cost of the drug. In the Indian context, it will be cost-effective uh, when the drug is needed in terms of what because if the, when the drug is not working, they are in ICU for extra days. Even if there is a max mobility, so four five days, eight days goes, and that's a cost is enormous compared to using drug at the right time. Uh, you have already spoken about a differential pricing, you know, in terms of the Indian market. So would this seventy to eighty percent pricing, lower pricing uh, that you mentioned earlier in your interviews, would this be straight off the bat or via an MRP, or would it be via compassionate use programs? No, it will be via MRP also, straight okay. ahead. Because affordability, okay. we have to take into consideration for significant amount of usage. So. Yeah. Our approach worldwide would be we will go uh, by power at various levels, generally mm -hmm. in the country, and price it accordingly. Okay. Um, now, nephitromycin had been launched commercially. Uh, there was a soft launch, right, in November. Has it been rolled out completely? No, it has not been yet launched. We have got approval uh, uh, in the first week of January, and we okay. will be launching. Uh, Making available in March and launching to medical profession uh, on a national nationalized nation basis from April. From April, okay. And do you have any arrangement where you will be making it available to the uh, WHO as well? Uh, see, this WHO issue will come much later. We have no idea whatsoever today. If the product gets approved, we will then approach uh, WHO and explore the possibility whether they would be using for uh, humanitarian purposes in the least developed countries. So we do not have any plan at this point in time. Okay. Now, considering that, you know, Wokhart has uh, made strides, uh, it, it did take a long time. Any R&D does take uh, quite some time to come to fruition. So uh, is what is the reason that we, you know, like, apart from a few companies, uh, like yourself, uh, they have been a few like Sun and Zydus, but most of the industry has not really invested in novel molecules. But uh, do you think that this is changing with, with startups coming in with support from the government in terms of uh, funding? Do you think this is going to change anytime soon? See, let me just explain to you how, why we went there and why we are in antibiotics. Because uh, we foresee 25 years back, even we were looking at what is happening. Mm. And we saw that the big pharma are vacating. So yes. that trend was there. So therefore, you know, any new drug you discover, you are in a competitive world as you are there, everything in life. But we cannot match the resources, both financial and organization and people. Mm -hmm. to fight with the uh, big pharma in terms of resources and succeed after 5-10 years of investment. So that, that is very true today. And therefore, uh, each company will have to identify how they are remaining competitive in research. Mm -hmm. In a global sense, and still find a better drug than others can find in time. Yeah. Yeah, right. I guess that is one of the reasons why Zytus has also got into their diseases. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So that is depends on the sustaining power and the belief in the organization, in the competency they develop in the innovative space. Actually. So it's a right. long process for anybody. What impact is this Windsor framework, which, you know, makes changes to the way drugs are made available in Northern Ireland? which means now it will be under uh, UK rather than being under the EU. 
So uh, how does it change uh, the arrangements for you? What kind of impact is that expected to have? See, the UK approval process, uh, from what we understand, is similar to EMEA. The fundamental approach in regulatory is they don't want to bring any changes. Otherwise, there will be major disturbances uh, in making their new drugs available. So, our view is that uh, when we file EMEA, we may file separately to UK for their approval. And that will take care of whichever comes first. Uh, mm, yeah. uh, we expect simultaneous actually. S small okay. time difference. So the other mm. island picks will not make too much difference uh, from that okay. perspective. As you mentioned, there have been a lot of changes that are happening in the US. Some wanted and some unwanted. What do you think uh, in particular is going to happen uh, with the stance on vaccines? And, uh, you know, also this, there are some tariffs that are being thought of. So, what is your feel on that? See, two things are there. One is as far as vaccine, I don't want to comment because we are not in that space, excepting we were planning to do something earlier when mm. the COVID issue was there. But we don't intend to be there. So, I have no idea. What okay. I don't expect... Uh, uh, significant changes taking place in the regulatory area. In fact, of tariff, tariff is a quick American uh, uh, patient has to pay for that, basically. Uh, the price will be higher to the extent of tariff if there is there. It, it's a cost to U.S. Uh, healthcare system. It yeah. does not make any difference to us. So most of our product for our setting, we are manufacturing in Europe. And if there is a tariff against your manufactured product, it will be applicable, whatever it is. Oh, what okay, we are okay. going to supply to US and Europe, we are not supplying from India. Our research is in India, our business is in Woka. Uh, but we have outsourced the manufacturing uh, to FDA approved facilities in Europe. Because what we about... want to do any risk because we are taking a uh, whole risk in uh, drug discovery clinical trial and everything. So right. we didn't want to take regulatory risk uh, from here. And we can absorb the, the cost difference in, your, uh, in our pricing strategy. So it's, uh, it became non insurance Oh, so what about nafitromycin? Nafitromycin, we are current. No, other thing I must tell you, okay, once we get filed to Zedek to USA, we huh. will be able to file simultaneously to most emerging market countries. We expect that approval to come much earlier. Uh, by the time we get US approval, by the, before even before European approval, we might get approval in many of the big emerging market countries, and we will build. A, we are build, looking at that as a potential business opportunities. Because okay, so. The drug is required everywhere. In fact, resistance level and uh, multi-drug resistance is much higher in most of the emerging market compared to the Western market. Would this be markets in Latin America, uh, Brazil, etc., Mexico? That is true. Brazil, Mexico, Southeast Asia, the MENA region. So once we file in US and we get approval because that becomes very fast, then they... The new drugs are needed, and so that is also a significant part of an opportunity we perceive uh, in emerging market. Given you know that the U.S. facilities, the manufacturing capability was wound up, uh, and Trump is now, or rather, the current administration is now keen that you know uh, things be manufactured in U.S. Is there going to be, or could there be a rethink in the approach? You know, People are aware that in a new drug discovery space, the cost of manufacturing play a relatively smaller element compared to research uh -huh. element and other things. So we are not revisiting that idea at all. Training or for future products. We could go yeah. one day in third party manufacturing. Way. If we are doing in Europe, if we have somebody available in US, we will explore those possibilities for other drugs. Okay. Thank you so much. Pleasure Thank talking you, to you. Pleasure talking to you. Okay.